Hello and welcome to Middleware Friday for November 16th, 2018. This is episode 81. And today we're going to be talking about Power Query and Microsoft Flow using the on-premises data gateway. So in the previous episodes, I guess it would be 79, I did a session on Power Query and Microsoft Flow. And the example I provided was a database connection to Azure, Azure SQL. Now we did have a bug in our connector that prevented access to on-premise data sources through the gateway. So I figured it would be worthwhile to go through a short video showing you how this works and just confirming that it does in fact work. Now I'm not going to go through installing the data gateway, but here is a link that will provide you guidance on how you go about doing that. Here is the document itself. It is fairly straightforward. You'll go ahead and you'll download the install package. You'll install this on a machine in your local network. It can be the same server as SQL Server, but it doesn't have to. Um, in, in some cases, more enterprise scenarios, you probably don't want it on the SQL Server, but it must have direct access to the SQL Server through a network connection. So if you cannot see it from one machine, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, the, the, in, the installation is pretty straightforward, uh, selecting a folder where you want it to be installed, accepting terms. Now this is important, you want to sign in with the account that you're going to be signing in into Flow, so that when we're in Flow and we want to create a connection, we're going to get prompted for a gateway, and we need to be able to link those two um, together. We also have the ability to register a new gateway or to take over an existing gateway. There's also some settings for high availability, which we won't get into in this video, but do make note of this recovery key um, in the event you ever want to restore your data gateway on another machine. Now, once it is installed, there is a little management experience where you can go ahead and check the status. You can go ahead and check network. You can enable HTTPS. Um, there's a few different options here, so just be aware of that. Now, if I go into SQL Server, in this case, I've got it running locally. So this M-I-N-I-N-T is my local machine name, and this would include my local SQL Server. We have two tables. One is customers, the other is work orders, and we're going to see that in our Power Query demonstration. So now I'm in Flow. I do have an existing Flow set up for this. What we can do is uh, we'll just I'll walk through the first few steps. We can go ahead and say uh, Power Query, do a search for Power Query. Sure enough, transform data using Power Query. Because I already have a connection established, it's going to prompt me or get me right into the Create Query Experience. But I can go ahead and click on Add New Connection. And here's where I would need to go ahead and specify it's an on-premise data gateway connection. So I could check that off. When I do, what will happen is I will see a gateway. So a list of gateways show up. Now I've called my gateway Kent Test. And as I mentioned before, when I logged into the gateway, I used this same account. And that's how we're able to see it here as well. We also need to choose our Windows authentication type, whether that be Windows or that be basic. So once you've got that set up, that is just like any old regular SQL connection using the on-premise data gateway. Now we could go ahead and do our um, the Power Query magic. So here I go ahead and, and click on, I'll use the existing connection, I'll click on Create Query. And now we're gonna see an experience much like I showed you in a previous episode. You might see it takes a few moments longer, just in general of we're making more network hops throughout, um, you know, across the, the Azure data centers plus our own on-premise networks as well. So here I have the ability to go ahead and select different tables. Much like I've done before in previous examples, I can go ahead and create a new query. So merge queries as new. I can go ahead and select my tables. In this case, it'll be work orders. And then I've got customers. I'm gonna do a left join. I want to join based upon my customer ID. I'll go ahead and expand this customer. So now I've got all of the data attributes across both of the tables in one query. 
I'll rename this query. We'll just call it final query. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we can only return one query back to flow. So we need to designate the one that we do want to return by enabling, uh, by clicking on enable load. So we'll go ahead and we can now click on create. And now we have a completed query. Naturally, we can go ahead and if we wanted to say email this information, we will get our dynamic query, our dynamic contents. And you know, much like any other flow experience, uh, the Power Query works just the same. So let's just go ahead and we will delete this. I will delete this step. I've got this basically configured above. We can now just go ahead and run it using the test flow feature. There we've seen that our flow has run successfully. In this case, it's only going to be returning one record, but we can now see that it, uh, it has done so. So short episode this week, but I really just wanted to confirm and show people that yes, using the on-premise data gateway does work with the Power Query functionality. Uh, this was fixed in early November. So if you were trying it before that, please come back and give it another shot. So that concludes this episode. I want to thank BizTalk360 for being a great partner of the show. Uh, next week, Steph Jan will be back up and he'll be running Middleware Friday and then I'll come back the following week. So take care and have a great weekend.